In this video, we'll try to learn what a gradient descent is and how we can apply on linear regression to find a convergence point for a given data set. That is, we make some prediction and then we're going to put an input. So the, the, the logic or algorithm makes a prediction of what the output should be. All right, welcome back to Code Something. So often in data mining and data analytics, we need to make some approximation based on some information we have. Um, one such technique is linear regression. So let's say we have a bunch of data set and then you have an output uh, value for it. So uh, using these data points, you're supposed to make some approximation so you can predict some value for it. Let's say you have a data set for which corresponds to, let's say, area and then housing prices. Let's say you did some survey in your neighborhood and then you found out that actually um, you, you basically note down the area of a land and then the price the land costs. So let's say you just have these different data points. Let's say X0 until XM and then your corresponding price values from Y0 to YM. And then you found a new, let's say you have a new point called XP or a new area value of XP. So what should be the price value for this XP. Now, this is like one case, you know, where you can apply this logic. So you can apply this regression to various kind of problems you encounter in real life. Anyway, so um, let's see how we can solve this problem. So if I were to fit this data points on a graph, it would look something like this. Let's say you plot all the areas on x-axis. On the y-axis, you plot on the price so the data points might look something like this, you know, assuming that as the area increases, the price value increases. So you're trying to fit a line or a curve between these data points in such that you minimize the error. What I mean by that, okay, let's see, I make a, I'm just trying to fit out, let's say y is equal to mx plus c. That's a line, right? So. Um, Let's take an example. Let's say we have put some line here. So if I were to vary the slope m, maybe like this, the error would increase. Um, I'm going to call this as a function f of x. That is equal to h of theta. That is equal to theta naught plus theta 1 into x. It's nothing but the same equation as y is equal to mx plus c, where theta naught is basically the um, your y coordinate and the next one is basically the slope component and then you plug in your area for x you get some value of y which is basically the price so let's say for this data point i have a area of say x3 so the corresponding actual value from the survey is y3 but my hypothesis makes a prediction of something else as a y3 dash. So the difference like y3 dash minus y3 is actual error. This is the error I make by making this equation. So you compare this error for all the data points and you take a summation. That's the error, that's the cost you're gonna get by making a wrong prediction for this h of theta. So ideally if we have an equation h of theta, so you keep varying your x naught, that is your, you know, y coordinate and then you vary your x1 which is basically slope you can put like various line on this graph and then you find out one such line such that it makes a least error for all the data points now to find the total error for making a wrong uh, prediction we can actually make an equation um, to represent this data set um, now you were trying to fit an equation h of theta of x, that is a theta 1, theta naught plus theta 1 into x. Let's say we keep theta naught as a constant and theta 1 as a variable. So you're going to get different slopes for this equation. Now for each wrong classification, that is, you're going to put in some value of um, x1 to it and then you'll get a new value based on this equation that is theta naught plus theta 1 into x1. That's a new value of y double dash and um, you are trying to compute this error. So we're gonna represent an equation form like something like this, sigma equals zero until m, that is all the data points. 
and you make a prediction for this value x when you're choosing that is x naught x1 until xm and then you take a difference with an actual value that is xi so this is a prediction and this is an actual value and that's your error and then you're going to square it because we just don't want to you know we're just more concerned about their magnitude is so you take a summation of all these values and then you sort of like average it out based on the maximum value that is number of you know total number of samples you have and that's going to give your total error for a classification of for a fitting you know, trying to fit a line of h of theta um, that is you're varying your slope now we can actually vary both in two dimensions that is theta and theta one but um we're gonna make a separate video for um those things so if i were to plot my errors on a new graph let's say i keep my theta naught as a constant value and i vary my theta one so um let's say i'm gonna vary my theta one so for some value of theta one i'm gonna get an error which is like very least and as you deviate from this this theta one you're going to keep increasing your errors. So it's going to be like equation, like a parabolic equation. And this is your error. So let's say you take some random point, let's say theta 1, 3. So you're going to get some error of E3. So if I move in this direction, I'm going to be increasing my theta 4. Maybe I'm going to move to theta 4 that's going to give me an error of theta 4 and we see that actually e error 4 is actually greater than error 3 so we know this we are going in the wrong direction so we would move in the opposite direction so i'm going to jump by a factor of let's say alpha that's our you know the small steps i'm going to take to find conversion value so when i jump to this value i see that okay i'm a new error called e2 and then i see that my e2 is actually less than E3. So I'm actually moving in the right direction to a least error possible. In case if I overshoot, let's say if, if I jump too much and if I move to this part of the curve. So up the same logic, you can just you know move in this direction. So somewhere you keep like jumping around and then you find a minimum error possible for some value of theta one. And that's the curve of equation in the line, that's the slope of a line which produces the least error for your data points. So if you have a new, say, point xp, you just put in the xp value to your hypothesis, you're going to get a new value for yp. And that's the best price you can sell your land for. So let's try to code this logic in Python and see how it looks. So uh, I have uploaded this code on GitHub, and you can find the link in the description. So to start, we needed some sort of data points so we can train our equations to make a prediction. So this file, the data.txt, has all the data points. Um, it has input on, um, so this column sort of represents my area as an input, and then this column represents the price for a given area. So um, the function um, I'm going to use called the recursive function is um, that's the converge function is actually a recursive function. So the first thing we're going to do is basically read the data points. So we're going to open the file. I'm going to put all the inputs, my area inputs, into X list. And the list Y is going to contain all my uh, price values. OK, so um, let's see, go to the bottom and see. OK, so the converge function has um, four um, input parameters. Um, the seed is going to be my theta 1, which is the slope for a line. So in this example, I'm going to hard code my theta naught. That's the uh, y coordinate for equation. So if my equation is like y is y max plus c, the c is going to be 2.5, and m is going to be my seed. So um, the previous error is the total error for a given hypothesis. And the flip is the direction in which the traversal happens for a given curve. Um, the, either we're gonna go, go to us left or right uh, based on the flip, flip values. So depth is actually a sort of trace um, because so so if you're converging right so it's a recursive function so if it doesn't converge at all 
so we might encounter a stack overflow so um i'm just gonna set a value of 900 like if we encounter say we can we recursively call the function say more than around 900 we're gonna quit the conversion function we're gonna say okay this is not converging at all so we need to find some better logic to solve the problem um this implementation is not a good implementation it's actually uh um it's computationally very expensive because you know we have better solutions we can use referentiations and you can find the uh convergence point in a single line this is just to understand the concept of gradient descent that's why um this code can help you understand that um all right, so well, the get error for hypothesis function is gonna compute the total error for a given hypothesis. Let's say your equation is 2.5 plus m into x. So uh, if you are finding that line on the data point, it's gonna compute the total error for that line. So the net error is gonna be your the, the one over two m times sigma equals your two m, your hypothesis value minus yi, that's the actual value. That's the total error for a given hypothesis. If my error is actually less than the threshold, so I have found the best value for the slope. That's my theta. If not, then I'm gonna converge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check, okay, what was my previous error? If my previous error was actually less than the current error, which means, so if my flip equals to zero, which means I'm actually, okay, moving towards the right. So I'm going to change the direction to flip equals to 1 and decrease the value of theta. If my flip is equals to 1, I was actually moving towards the left direction. So I'm going to change the flip equals 0 and then I'm going to start moving towards the right, but incrementing the value of theta. So, um, so we're going to do until we converge to a certain point that is an acceptable error. So if you find such a value, I'm going to start stop converging and then I'm going to make a prediction for an input. So that's the logic I'm going to, the gradient descent was going to work on. Let's run this thing and see how it works. Okay, so for the given data point, it start converging. It has found a value of slope is equal to 2.0. And then it says this is the equation which best fits the data points to make a least error possible. So let's put in some input and see how it works. So I'm going to pick a random data point. Um, I'm going to feed an input of say 99 point, um, maybe like 768, some random value, somewhere between these two points. So if my hypothesis is right, I should find some value close to these data points. Let's see. So it makes a prediction of 202.036, which is like almost close to one of these values. In the next video, we're going to um, make both theta naught and theta one as variables. Um, we're going to compute a sort of a partial derivatives for a cost function and then we'll try to converge both theta naught and theta one. So we're going to put a best line for the zeta points. Um, we want to also be using sort of a linear algebra concepts where you're going to multiply using matrices because, you know, this is not our best way to approximate because it's computationally very expensive to use this logic. So um, we're going to compute a partial derivatives and find an equation to make this computationally much more simple. All right, see you then.